This is Adam Walton on BBC Radio Wales. Um, and I think that record uh, met the approval of our next guest on the programme. What if everything we knew about the world was a lie? Would we be able to perceive the truth if it was shown to us? Ancient civilizations, hyperdimensional realities, DNA changes, Bible conspiracies, which are true and which are deliberate disinformation? Laura Knight Yatchik says she has the real answers. And believe me, if you read a book, The Secret History of the World and How to Get Out Alive, you'll know that the truth is far weirder than fiction. And Laura joins us now from our Paris studio. Welcome to the programme, Laura. Oh, well, hi. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, uh, first and foremost, Norman Greenbaum, Spirit in the Sky. I believe you enjoyed that. I love that song. It's one of my favourites. Excellent. Well, I think we chose it especially for you, Laura. It's about as uh, as creative as we get on this programme sometimes. Now, um, I felt very, uh, you know, guarded really about using the term uh, conspiracy theories. I wasn't really sure how to to bracket your book, as it were. Do, do we need to be able to bracket your book, bracket your writings, be able to fit it into a genre or a pigeonhole? Well, it's, it's really very difficult. It's difficult for me because, for example, you refer to, uh, say, conspiracy theories and... Uh, a theory is something that's based on a certain number of concrete observations or facts. You don't form a theory until you have collected uh, uh, facts and data. And if you'll notice, I've got uh, you know 15-page bibliography in there, maybe 16-page, uh, that includes you know the literature that uh, I went through uh, in order to collect the data that is included in the book. The book is heavily footnoted. Um, it does not uh, get into any kind of um, uh, material that is not fact-based and uh, is just the interpretation of those facts that is, is somewhat different mm. because, you know, uh, you can take the same facts and interpret them any numbers of ways, but generally what happens is people interpret facts and exclude some in favor of others because there are those inconvenient facts, what Charles Fort called the damned data and uh, the only kind of explanation you can uh, come come up with for this world that will make any sense is one that includes all of the damned data. Mm, it's it's uh, interesting that you should mention Charles Fort. We we, uh, we interviewed someone about him not so long ago on the programme, and of course he was a another maverick. I mean, do you, do you uh, if I call you a maverick, do you is that a difficult or, or a, a title that you don't feel fits you particularly well? Well, Maverick is probably uh, pretty good because I definitely do not go along with the herd, and I don't even go along with the herd of the so-called alternative theorists. <laughs> hmm. Well, indeed, I've not had um, an opportunity to read the book myself, and I feel as though, you know, I like to be able to do that, especially in these situations, because I feel as though the easiest thing to do whenever anyone propounds or expounds, um, you know, theories that go against the grain and go against the norm is almost to, to, to pour scorn on them. Um, in a situation like this, Laura, do you feel defensive? Have you gone through a lot of experiences where people aren't actually prepared to listen to what you've got to say and would more rather kind of pour scorn on you before they give, uh, give you a chance to, to explain yourself? Well, as I, as I mentioned, I uh, write some things that are counter to even the alternative theorists of today, so... Um, I get uh, scorned by the scientific community to some extent. They they have a little more difficulty actually scorning me than uh, than the alternative community because I support what I say with so much data. But the alternative community, of course, uh, was it was quite a surprise to to be so viciously attacked by by those uh, types of people and also the so-called New Age community. Uh, so and then of course naturally the the the, the religion uh, the religionists uh, Christian uh, Muslim Jewish it doesn't matter because uh, they're all based on one single document which is the Bible and I pretty much uh, uh, dissect the Bible uh, in this book and uh, explain things in ways that are uh, more comprehensible and and that it's not even a new uh, way of approaching uh, this sort of semi semi legendary semi mythical material it's it's something that Mircea Eliade uh, a historian of religion did many years ago and I quote uh, quote him extensively as well as other historians of religion so it's um so I get attacked by people who are in religions, people in the New Age, people in, in the scientific community, although, like I said, the scientific community uh, pretty much leaves me alone. 
Mm. Well, they, they appreciate the, the, the rigorousness of, of your work. By the I, I, have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of scientists who are fans, actually. Some of them covertly, they will write, they will write uh, fan mail to me and ask me, please, not to, to, <laughs> to reveal the fact that they you know, enjoy my book so much. It's funny, that's uh, a lot of the correspondence I get doing this program is, is along similar lines. I wonder <laughs> why. Uh, now, as far as the book itself is concerned, um, it is uh, an attempt to, well, not an attempt, it, it rewrites human history. So it's difficult for me, as the interviewer, really to, to, to focus in on any one point where you could perhaps give the people listening an insight into the, 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 you know, the dramatically different way that you interpret the facts that you mentioned earlier. So is there perhaps a, a best part of history where we could start? Well, the, the fundamental thesis of the book is that our reality is uh, projected or embedded in a higher or hyper-dimensional reality and that uh, what we perceive with our, with our senses, you know, the... the uh, three dimensions of uh, space and uh, four dimensions of space and time are not uh, all there is. And that, you know, even when we try to measure things that come from these other realities with our limited three dimensional instrumentation, they fall short. You know, you can't, uh, you can't even go there. So uh, that's, that's the fundamental thesis. So taking history, taking uh, the data that we have uh, about human history, some of which is extremely mysterious, and some of which is it, it's baffling, some of it's very shocking. Uh, putting it together, you begin to see a pattern, a, a flow of something that enters and exits our reality uh, in, in a way that, uh, if, if you're familiar with the story Flatland, uh, where, where the plane being, where the fingertips are, are put on the plane and, and what you see on a plane are, are round circles. And if the hand were, were to be put through a membrane, you would just see, you know, circles going through until the hand actually coalesced into a larger object. But to the beings of the membrane, it would never be anything other than a circle that, you know, appeared and disappeared in, in time. So, you know, our reality is something like that, and that there are denizens of this other reality that are perceivable to some people uh, through history, and, and they've, down through history, they've referred to them as, as gods or goddesses or, um, you know, forces, beings, whatever, and they uh, ascribe to them powers, uh, appearances, you know, based upon how they read them. I don't think that they necessarily... Uh, are amorphous either, and that's 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 where the New Age community has completely gone astray, by thinking that anything outside of this reality must be amorphous, must be a spirit. It doesn't have to be a spirit at all, just a just a slight shift in the dimensional reality, and you have a, a completely other reality that is as physical as our own. Okay, now, um, Laura, from the point of view of the, the you know the, the basic science really behind this, the idea of parallel universe is obviously one that's very common. Um, amongst physicists, I believe mm. your your husband is a is a, a well renowned physicist yes, as is. well. So, you know, at least from that particular foundation, there would appear to be great scientific support for your theories. What? Why is there then resistance um, from all of the bodies that you mentioned? If this could, you know, if this is almost explainable. Well, as I said, people who. Uh, are attached to their religion don't want a rational explanation for for what happens people who are attached to the new age the new age is really little more than uh, than a uh, a variation on the old old standard religions it's just i just call it new age fundamentalism uh, the, uh, the the scientific support that i get is is really kind of unique because it comes from odd and unusual places and then there are are of course many people in the scientific community who um, who just reject it out of hand. I mean, there's there's one uh, one of my husband's colleagues who jokes that uh, he does uh, world class mathematics on odd days and uh, channels on even days. So we we have a, an interesting life in that respect. Um, so I, th I think some of the rejection comes from from some of the inspiration that I have used to follow these clues. Okay. Well, I, I would. Well, and obviously people um, have vested interests, don't they, in preserving Absolutely. their own version of the status quo. Now, you mentioned multiple realities. Why is it important for us as, as humans to try and question or determine a reality that's beyond our own? What, what, you know, in other words, if we can't actually change other realities or change our own reality, 
Is there any point in, in, in making the voyage that you have, as it were? Well, there's nothing that says that we can't change it if we know about it and understand it. You know, what you don't know can definitely hurt you, especially in this respect. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, really got me going many years ago was that I would, uh, you know, I would read these so-called conspiracy theories and I would follow each theory as far as I could follow it, you know, following a paper trail. And I always came up against a dead end. I mean, it was like you would take it as far as you could go, and then it was a dead end. It was like, okay, beyond this, this is a, there is a mystery. So it's difficult for me because, for example, you refer to, uh, say, conspiracy theories, and uh, a theory is something that's based on a certain number of concrete observations or facts. You don't form a theory until you have collected uh, uh, facts and data. And if you'll notice, I've got, uh, you know, 15-page bibliography in there, maybe 16-page. This is Adam Walton on BBC Radio Wales, um, and I think that record uh, met the approval of our next guest on the programme. What if everything we knew about the world was a lie? Would we be able to perceive the truth if it was shown to us? Ancient civilizations, hyperdimensional realities, DNA changes, Bible conspiracies, which are true and which are deliberate disinformation? Laura Knight Yatchik says she has the real answers, and believe me, if you read a book, The Secret History of the World and How to Get Out Alive, you'll know that the truth is far weirder than fiction. And Laura joins us now from our Paris studio. Welcome to the programme, Laura. Oh, well, hi. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, uh, first and foremost, Norman Greenbaum, Spirit in the Sky. I believe you enjoyed that. I love that song. It's one of my favourites uh, that includes, you know, the literature that uh, I went through uh, in order to collect the data that is included in the book. The book is heavily footnoted. Um, it does not uh, get into any kind of um, uh, material that is not fact-based and uh, is just the interpretation of those facts. Excellent. I think we chose it especially for you, Laura. It's about as, uh, as creative as we get on this programme sometimes. Now, um, I felt very, uh, you know, guarded really about using the term uh, conspiracy theories. I wasn't really sure how to to bracket your book, as it were. Do, do we need to be able to bracket your book, bracket your writings, be able to fit it into a genre or a pigeonhole? Well, it's, it's really very difficult.